My guest today on In the Driver's Seat is Eric Fulmer. He's the Director of Marketing of Excel. I don't blame you for not having heard of Excel. It's a relatively small company based in Boston, and they have a particular niche in the transportation business that we're going to discuss today. Excel makes hybrid systems and plug-in hybrid systems for commercial trucks, particularly those made by a company called Naphide. If you don't know what Naphide is, you're, you're in the majority. I didn't know what Naphide was either, but you've seen their trucks all over the place because they are basically commercial versions of trucks that are coming out of the factories at G- Chevrolet, GMC, and Ford. And basically, these are, these are trucks that have been upfitted for um, Pepsi, Coke, Verizon, uh, the utility companies, the city of Boston, the city of Seattle, all of these trucks that are outside a lot and on the road a lot, burning a lot of fuel and really in a, in a work load area. A, a, a normal pickup truck wouldn't work well for Verizon. So what Verizon does, for instance, is they buy a commercial GM truck and then they have it upfitted by Naphide. Naphide's an interesting company, too. Uh, we don't have anybody from Naphide today uh, with us, but they've been in business since 1848. So this is even before the car. They were making commercial versions of buggies, I guess. But XL has sort of gotten into this niche, and we're lucky to have Eric Fulmer with us today. Eric, welcome to In the Driver's Seat on Sirius XM Insight 121. And uh, I, I was struck by uh, a, a nugget I saw that somebody sent in the mail about XL, and that's why I invite you to come on the show. Tell us, explain to the audience here, on Sirius XM, basically why a company would want to put a gas electric hybrid system into a perfectly good truck. Yeah, well, thank you, Daron, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of great reasons why a commercial fleet would want to electrify um, their, their vehicles. One is a, is a financial savings. So with our systems getting added on to a standard commercial uh, vehicle from like a Ford or a GM, um, we can we can see uh, MPG improvements of 25 to 50. MPG meaning average. mile per gallon, of course. The the, the fuel efficiency. That's efficiency. correct. Right. Yes, exactly. So you're turning them into more fuel efficient vehicles um, that are producing, on average, uh, 20 to 33 percent fewer carbon emissions. So you're reducing the the um, the greenhouse gas emissions of these vehicles as well. So it's a twofer, so really. You save, two. you end up saving money, and you can also brag in the advertisements about how you're keeping the earth clean. That's exactly right. And that's actually, <laughs> you know, for a commercial truck or for, or for a municipal fleet, um, that's a big deal for them to be able to put a, a hybrid sticker on their vehicle and, you know, driving around their communities and demonstrating that they are, uh, that they're greening their fleet, that they are uh, committed to sustainability for their communities um, that's becoming an increasingly popular um, uh, promotional move for the the municipal you know governments, the sure. local city and state yeah, the politicos they so can say, look, advantage. we're keeping the earth clean, and you should vote for us because we spent the money to do this, and uh, you believe in it, so vote for us, and good for them. Hey, I I I, yeah. I was uh, struck by this, and the systems that are put into these trucks, they're not inexpensive. If I were to, I was asking you about this uh, earlier, if I were to put a, uh, a gas electric hybrid in, in, in a, my F-150 truck, let's say I have one, I don't have one, but let's say I would have one, that would cost about 11,000 bucks. And if I wanted a plug-in hybrid, which would allow the vehicle to run for a while on pure electric, and, and you could recharge it, that would be 25,000 bucks. So, if these companies are spending in their fleets anywhere from ten to twenty five thousand dollars per truck to to bring them up to um, to reduce the fuel to increase the fuel efficiency and uh, reduce the use of fuel and reduce the emissions, how long does it take them before they make their money back on the initial investment yeah that's a great question so there's a couple of things to unpack there first of all, um, in terms of the um, the, the overall return on investment, you know, depends on the driving circumstances, how often they drive them, uh, what kind of mileage they're getting from the vehicles, from the factory vehicles to begin with. But essentially, we've seen uh, return on investment anywhere uh, between two and five years for many of our vehicles, simply because 
the commercial fleet trucks are driving um, a lot more often, a lot more miles, and uh, and they're putting a lot more cumulative miles on those vehicles. So where a consumer may, you know, get rid of their uh, vehicle at 100,000 miles. And put 15,000 miles on are, average on that vehicle. I mean, that's, you know, that, that means they're holding them for 10 years or something. You guys oh, easily, do, yeah. So, yeah, you guys put half a million miles on. I mean, let's say the Boston Electric Company puts half a million miles on its vehicles in five years. Right, exactly. So, you know, you're, you're dealing with uh, commercial fleets that are driving these trucks for much greater distances or much greater um, lengths of time, I should say. Um, and then one, one quick clarification just in terms of our technology sure. on the plug-in hybrid side. Um, we actually, one of the interesting things about our technology is it does not, uh, the, the, um, the, the plug-in component does not uh, provide all electric power. So you're oh. still using the internal combustion gas-powered engine of the vehicle, and we are simply providing an electrification assist. So okay. when the driver hits the gas, Okay. We are providing a, 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 a torque boost uh, into that, into the drivetrain. So it basically helps propel the vehicle along without using as much gas and without Got producing it. as many emissions. Whereas uh, in so a, that's true on in both a, our hybrid and plug-in hybrid. Whereas in a consumer vehicle, a plug-in hybrid implies that there's the, the internal combustion engine is not working at all. That is correct. So those those vehicles are built from the ground up by the uh, vehicle makers to to respond that way. So since we get added on to those trucks, we are essentially leveraging their existing gas powered engine and just giving it a boost when they hit the gas. And the nice part about it, too, is there's a there's a, a process that we use that we build into our technology called regenerative braking. And so what happens there? is you are hitting the, the brakes and now you're actually transferring and storing energy from that process. You're taking the kinetic could, energy of the slowing vehicle and you're charging the battery with it. Exactly. Exactly. It. So it's interesting. That's that's very cool. So I hate to put it this way exactly, but when you see oil prices going up, everybody's happy at your company, right? <laughs> we we certainly do because that helps those. sales. You know, it, the, the it, more expensive it, gasoline it is, then you, the better the better things are for uh, for XL, I suppose. It it does help shorten that uh, return on investment time period, certainly. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. So XL is based in Boston. It's uh, only been around since two thousand nine. I was surprised to hear that because usually. Um, companies that uh, are as prominent as you are in transportation, they've been around a lot longer. Uh, how many people you have working for you? And, and explain exactly how this system of yours actually gets installed into a, a vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. So XL, as you said, is based in Boston. We are up to uh, 50 full-time employees now. And that is uh, double what we were even a year ago. And uh, so we are we're growing rapidly. Um, we're really uh, expanding our footprint in the fleet industry with a number of new products, including the only plug-in hybrid F-150 uh, on the road today. So that's been a huge seller for us. Um, that's the, cool. Uh, now, and you, but you don't actually manu- you don't actually install. manufacture anything. You're install. you're bu- you're you're basically buying parts and and getting them put into these vehicles at the at, at, at in the manufacturing process. You're not manufacturing these systems. So we are actually, yeah, we are, we are, um, we are engineering the systems as a as a complete system. So our system, um, which really just in, uh, includes a number of different components, it's an electric motor um, that sits on a, a shortened factory drive shaft. So the, okay. the motor sits on the drive shaft itself, um, and then there's a lithium ion battery pack. And then a motor drive, which transfers that power back and forth during the regenerative braking process, whether it's storing energy or transferring energy into the acceleration process. So it's really those three main components that we engineer as a system that can then be um, added to a a factory uh, commercial truck. So we don't make the trucks. We make the system that turns them into hybrids and plug-in hybrid electric versions of those vehicles. 
Nice. And then we rely on partners like Napide and other upfitters throughout the country to be able to install those systems um, and then deliver them back to the fleet manager, who is the one who is ordering the trucks, in a very seamless way. So they will still order the, the trucks through their dealer, as they always would. The dealer uh, works with an upfitter company and uh, a company like XL who produces these types of electrification technologies. And when the fleet manager receives his or her vehicle, it is, it is uh, turnkey, it's ready to go, and it's seamless to them. They have been uh, disconnected from the entire process of all the steps that are involved to add that system on because they're also adding a lot of other custom accessories onto those trucks typically. So ours is one of several upfits that is happening typically through an upfitting process. So they're, they're adding a bunch of new uh, features to those vehicles, and we're just one of them that gets added during that process. Interesting. So I got to think that this whole idea for a business, there's some genius behind all this. You've only been around since 2009. Who figured this all out and decided that this was a business and put this all together in this way? Yeah, so our, our founders really uh, were, were ingrained in, in sort of the, um, the, the green energy space. Uh, they come from uh, wind, uh, they come from solar, they come from electric, um, and they recognized that there was a, a significant gap in the marketplace for electrification of commercial fleet vehicles. So the, the, the automakers were making or were just starting to make you know, hybrid versions of their consumer vehicles, but there was really a gap and there remains a gap today on the commercial side. And when you think about it, these are the vehicles that you're, you're talking about with single miles per gallon rating, sing, single digit miles per gallon rating in many cases uh, that are producing uh, the lion's share of carbon emissions on the roads in this country. So, um, so our founders really understood that this was an opportunity to take uh, the least fuel efficient vehicles under the least on, under the most inefficient driving conditions, which is really stop and go driving in urban environments. That's when a vehicle is operating at its least efficient uh, 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 manner. So we basically take those vehicles under those driving conditions and increase the fuel economy and decrease the emissions for them. So we're making a substantial impact on, you know, not only the financial gains that a fleet manager can get, but also on the environment and the sustainability of those of those fleets and of those vehicles. That's interesting. So in other words, we're, we're talking about vehicles that might be getting seven or eight or nine miles per gallon on an everyday basis as they come out of the factory. And you're helping them get my maybe 11 or 12 or possibly 15 miles per gallon depending on the system you put in there and how they're used. And that doesn't sound like much of an improvement, but when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of miles and the fact that these are being used day and night often uh, by different crews to sort of put wires back up on uh, that have been knocked down by storms or to deliver things, uh, you know, Pepsi in the middle of the night or fix uh, telephone systems, then you're really talking about a lot of emissions and, and a lot of fuel saved and a lot of money saved. Yeah, that's exactly right. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about when all the uh, car companies decide they're going to get into this business? Are, are, are they talking about it? I mean, if they see you doing such a good job, why don't they just put a gas-electric hybrid uh, commercial version out themselves? So the, the real rationale for that is that, that in the uh, consumer marketplace, there is a much more viable market for, um, um, for these type of vehicles at the consumer level because the, the volumes of the vehicles are, are a lot more substantial than what we'd be talking about for the commercial fleet industry. Now, the other part of that, too, is um, the commercial trucks um, are so highly customized that it just would not, and, and that includes not only the electrification technology that we're adding, but all of the different accessories that you think about that go into a, a standard work truck or a utility truck. Um, there are so many specialized individual aspects of those vehicles that it just would be impossible or um, certainly not a good business model for the, the auto manufacturers to make um, uh, vehicles uh, in, those, in, in those models. So, 
So they're so really the small are, volume. The, the small commercial. volume is really what allows you to get a foothold there because they're not they're not creating tens or twenty thousand of these vehicles. We're talking about maybe hundreds or a couple of thousand. Yeah, exactly. So you're dealing with a small percentage of the overall market uh, share uh, that a, that a that a vehicle manufacturer is dealing with on an annual basis. So the the consumer the consumer market is still far more. Uh, viable for for these type of technologies in that space at the um, at the level of the uh, the auto manufacturers. So uh, this is kind of a specialized um, specialized aspect of a commercial fleet truck, which would have any number of other accessories built into it as well. So it's a nice niche that wasn't being filled before we started doing this, and and now we're we're uh, affording those fleets with. Uh, greener vehicles and and uh, more sustainable, um, you know, trucks for for the environment. Well, Eric, thanks very much for being with us. If you're just joining us now, my guest has been Eric Fulmer, of director of marketing for XL, a Boston company that puts gas electric hybrid powertrains in commercial work trucks and plug-in gas electric hybrid powertrains in commercial work trucks, and you see them all the time in the uh, in traffic. And now you pay closer attention to them. Thanks for being with us here on In the Driver's Seat on Sirius XM Insight 121. We'll see you down the road. Great. Well, Jerome, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure.